Hello, I'm Carl Rowland with Sherline Products. And in this video, we're gonna show you how to set the backlash on your uh, ball screw lathe. I wanna go over a couple points before we get started. Uh, for starts, I'm using a tense indicator. And it's a quality indicator. The most critical thing on checking your backlash is making sure that your setup is correct. You wanna have your indicator parallel with the axis that it's mounted to. You don't want it off at an angle one way or the other, okay? Any angle other than parallel with the surface is not is gonna give you a false reading or inaccurate reading as far as how much backlash you have. So this guy is now parallel with the Z axis. The next one is the actual point of your indicator. I'm gonna be indicating in the front surface of this tool post to check my Z axis backlash. I want my indicator tip to be parallel with this surface right here. Again, if this is off at, say, a 45 degree angle, you're gonna get a reading on this, but it's not gonna be a one-to-one -one ratio because of the angle that you're at. So you wanna have your tip close to parallel. Right there should be good. So right now I'm ready to go. If I jog my Z-axis in, you can see it's a pretty good relationship right there. And then what I would do is just, I'm on continuous, I would go to step mode and we'll put it on 10 thousandths. And I'd step in until it starts to register on the indicator. Right, there's a good register. So right now we're, the, it's actually registered. You wanna make sure that your indicator's not pegged out either. You get a really good reading if your indicator's pegged and it's showing you absolutely no deviation. But that would not be accurate either. Um, so I just clicked it to one thou and I'm going to back it out. Okay, to make sure that I'm inside the range of the indicator, I'm not maxed out. So we'll leave it at two right there. So this guy is set up to check our backlash right now, just the way it is. When you're checking your backlash, you don't wanna use your hand pulse generator. Uh, you don't wanna use the jog. What you wanna use is MDI and give it uh, a command to move a specific distance. Uh, whether you're in jog or on the hand pulse generator, the, the amount that it moves in those two modes is not going to be accurate, okay? So what we're going to do is go to F2, Program MDI, go to the MDI mode. Right now the Z axis is loaded in the Z minus direction, so I'm going to punch in uh, G code to move it four thousandths in the plus direction, and we'll see how much the indicator moves. So I'm going to go G91, which is an incremental move, G01, which is a linear move with a feed, not a rapid move. Z.004 for the distance I want the Z axis to move. And a F2.0, which is a feed rate of two inches a minute, not a rapid move. And it went two and a half, two and six tenths. So I've got about a thousand four tenths difference right there. Something I'd like to show you on this, with the indicator loaded, okay, I'm pushing and pulling on my saddle. You can see the indicator moving a few tenths in both directions, but it's bouncing back. This is, the, the machine is tight. The actual backlash that you're seeing here, the amount is more a factor of uh, friction drag of the saddle and the give on the bed than it is the ball screw. The ball screw has virtually no backlash whatsoever. It's a couple tenths per inch. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna hit escape to get out of MDI. I'm gonna to go to my setup page and on the Z axis, double click, and right down here it has backlash. So what I'm gonna do, right now it's set at zero. And I'm gonna put in, say, one four, uh, one thou four tenths, and save. All right, now I'm gonna go back to MDI again. Call it my MDI page. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load it again. So I'm gonna go G91, G01, Z minus. I wanna get it to the two, so it's two, two minus point oh oh two eight just to get it loaded. That's got me a couple tenths past two. I'm gonna go Z, Point oh oh four. Now I'm going to 
bring it up to the 2, z minus 0 0.0038. That's got me right on the 2. Now if I go plus 4 from there, z 0 0.004, that's got me that one exactly 4,000. So I have, uh, I have 1,000, what did I say? And about a thousand four tenths worth of mechanical backlash, and it's spot on the money right now. Uh, what I'd like to show you is with the machine, it's it's repeatability. We'll go to the MDI page, uh, and I'm loaded. Actually, we'll load it again. G91, G01, Z minus 0.004, F2.0. Okay, so I'm loaded right there. Now I'm going to go half inch away, half inch back up. So we're going to go G91, G00, we'll do rapid move Z.5. Just move the half inch away. I'm going to go Z minus 0.5. And it goes right back to that spot, like right on the money to that spot. Now if I take my offset, my backlash amount, and I'm going to take I'm going to take it down to one thousand with a backlash. Save back to MBI again. G91, G00, Z.5. Moves a half inch away. Z minus 0.5, and it's still going right back to that same spot. So. The, that four tenths is, I, I'd say we're, we're about a thou worth of backlash. The four tenths is probably more of a matter of overcoming friction than anything, but it does repeat itself right on the money here. The Z axis, I'd leave it set at a thou, and that's obviously repeating, so we're good. If we're going to do the X axis, what we're going to do is use this side of the tool post, so I'll show you the proper setup for your indicator for that, and go to continuous. Going to jog the Z out. Now it's just, this is still parallel with the Z axis, and that's good. But now what I want to do is change my tip so that the tip is now parallel with this surface, not this surface. It can be at a slight angle is fine, but you definitely don't want it any more than that. And we'll come in. Right there, I just touched it on in a big way. Now I'm going to go again. I know to make sure that I'm in the middle of the range of the, the indicator. So we're good right there. I'm going to put it on step mode. Now, the important thing to, re to remember here is your machine is set up for diameter. So if you tell it to move one thou, it's only going to actually move the cross line half a thou because that would be a difference, diameter difference of one thou. So whereas on the z-axis it was a one-to-one -one ratio, it's a two-to-one ratio now. So in order to have this move four thousandths, we have to actually give it a command to move eight thousandths. So I'm going to go back to MDI and I'm going to load it up to the number two again on the indicator. So I'm going to go. G91, G01, X minus 0 0.0004, this is off about two tenths, F2.0, and it's got me almost there, X minus 0 0.002, all right, so I'm right on the two. Now I'm going to go plus eight thousandths, and my indicator should move four thousandths, so I'm going to go X.008, and it's got about one thousandths right there. So I'm going to go to my setup screen again, F2, go to the X axis, all right, and for my offset here, I'm going to put in one thou. Save it, go back to MDI. Now I'm going to load it back the other way. So G91, G01. X minus 0 0.006, F2.0. All right, that put me right to the two. And I'm going to go X minus. 
X.016. Okay, I'm off a little bit. X.004. X minus 0.008. Load it back. So I'm right at 2. X.008 to bring it back. That's within a tenth, two tenths. So we have basically a thousandths worth of backlash on the Z, a thousandths in the X. And on the X, it's the same thing. Okay, I can push and pull on this, and you can see the indicator moving a couple tenths, but it bounces right back. Um, so holding a tolerance of a half hour, a few tenths here is definitely not going to be a problem. Uh, the same thing on this one. If I go uh, G91, G00, X.5, moves away a half inch, X minus 0.5, X.5, moves away, X minus 0.5. It's going right back to the same spot. X.5, X minus 0.5. We're tight right there. So repeatability and your backlash is set. This guy's pretty tight. Now we have set the backlash in both the X axis and the Z axis. Uh, you, you're easily within tenths on this machine. So uh, this machine is ready to cut some chips and make some parts. Thank you.